KFAB. 70 in Omaha, Lincoln, and Council Bluffs. Schrock Innovations presents the Midwest's number one independent computer repair company with service centers in Lincoln, Omaha, Papillion, and across the country via the Schrock desk. This is Compute This. Good morning, folks, and welcome into Compute This. My name is Thor Schrock. I'm the owner of the Schrock Innovations Computer Company, where, like the man said, we've got three physical locations to help you out. Super important right now with preventative maintenance checkups on special, by the way. Original location is in Lincoln, Nebraska. 1999 founded. We're going to be 20 years old on, uh, on January. 20 years, that's like a prison sentence, you know what I mean? I mean wow, it's a long time. So uh, the original Schrock Innovations, 27th and Pine Lake Road in Lincoln. In Omaha, 168th and Burke, that's Village Point South, across the street from the mall, where the rent is cheaper. And in Papillion, 84th and Highway 370. All right, but right now, we are located right here on your radio. Also at SchrockInnovations.com, where we have the Schrock desk. We can help you out anywhere you, you are with a computer and, of course, an internet connection. We can be there with you. And on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Schrock Innovations. You can watch the show live there. Also, if you miss part of the show, you can actually uh, go back to Facebook. It archives the program. So you can watch it later. It's also available on SchrockInnovations.com as well. All right. Welcome aboard, guys. Uh, welcome to all the people on Facebook. Janice, Roger, Thomas, good to have you there. We've got people checking in from various states. We'd love to see that. Just That's curious i like to see where everyone's listening from uh especially with facebook um while you have a moment on facebook if you could uh you know click like or click share on the uh, on the post there it really helps us out to spread the word to other people who may not just naturally fall upon the program one other thing uh, while i'm asking you to do stuff this sunday morning uh you know wake up good morning how are you doing this is me okay now i need you to do stuff um the one thing that i really 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 need you to do today if you could um, the last day for Best of Omaha voting is tomorrow. Um, so basically, if you could go to uh, Best of Omaha and vote for us, I will put the link here in the in Facebook here uh, for those of you who are on Facebook to uh, to do that here during the program in the next commercial break. Uh, I have a quick vote code that automatically uh, takes you where you need to be. It's kind of neat. Um, but the voting is almost over for that. And uh, as I mentioned, I have been hoarding various electronic goods over the past year um, because we they do the uh, Best of Omaha Festival. And if you win, you get an invitation to spend a whole lot of money to buy some tables at the Best of Omaha Festival. And so uh, we do. We buy a bunch of tables, and then we go in there, and we, we do something fun. La uh, last year, it was Lotto Schrock, uh, which was like Schrock Lottery. Um, you have to guess the numbers, and you type them in on the screen, and then if you unlock the thing, you get a prize. And we had some little kid just walk up and be like, boop, 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 doesn't. Just put in four numbers and boom, won himself a tablet, just like that. Um, but I've got all kinds of cool things, everything from $100 headphones all the way you know, to you know, battery chargers to Schrock products, of course, that we have set aside for that Best of Omaha show. But if we don't win, we don't go. So the best way to make sure you have your chance to win some free stuff is to vote for us in the Best of Omaha competition. All right, 866-496-8772. Those are the numbers to join us on the program today. And what a program it will be. All right, so first of all, the uh, the lead story for the show today, and we're going to talk about this one in depth, um, there is a gap, as many of you know, between the cyber warfare capabilities of China and the cyber warfare capabilities of the United States. Um, what you might be surprised is who's on the back end of that gap right now and who is struggling to catch up. Uh, so we're going to talk about that on the program. Uh, last week, when we talked about preventative maintenance checkups being on sale, I said, while you're on the website, go ahead. And if you want to, you can grab your copy of Safe Upgrade while they're still there. Uh, Safe Upgrade is the product that we make that, uh, that ensures that your download of these huge Windows 10 version updates that come out every six months are, are is done successfully on your computer. 20% um, of the time, they blow everything up. And we'll talk about that later in the program, too. But uh, one of the big things they're changing in Redstone 5, that's the update coming out this October, is how Windows updates work. So we're going to tell you about that coming up on the program. Because, you know, everybody is super concerned about how their Windows updates work. Um, they're going to monkey with Windows Update. That's all you need to be concerned about. That, that never ends well, not, not the first time. Um, if you use Mozilla Firefox, 23 add-ons have been removed. Were you running one of them that was tracking your user activity? Oh, yes. And the fun story of the day. Hacky hack hack. Sounds like a, it's a teen thing, an Australian teen thing. They do weird things like you know, peanut butter sprinkle sandwiches. Have you heard about that? 
Oh yeah, they, they they will put peanut butter and sprinkles on a sandwich. That's a thing. Like you can Google it. That's like it's like peanut butter and jelly in Australia. Uh, sprinkles, a sprinkle sandwich. It's literally a sugar sandwich. It's it's amazing. Um, hacky hack hack. A teen decides he's bored on a Friday night and decides to hack Apple and steal like ninety gigabytes of their consumer user data. Just some kid in Australia. Yeah, well, Apple has dropped the weight of the world. You thought you thought Osama bin Laden had it bad. This kid, I mean. He is, they won't even release his name because they're afraid that someone's going to kill him. That's not a joke. Um, so basically, we're going to talk about that. But we, of course, we won't release his name because we don't want to cause anything, anything terrible to happen. All right. So preventative maintenance checkups, I've said this a couple times, are on special at Schrock right now for half off. A lot of new listeners to the program. So I'm going to cover this. I spent some time on it last week. So you can obviously go back in the archives and listen to that show to get all of the gritty details. But I'm going to recap it here just for those who are joining us for the first time on the program today. Uh, preventative maintenance checkups are on special. Normally, they're $90. They're about half off right now at Schrock. So you can come bring your computer in. Uh, the Lincoln Service Center has a very small queue. Uh, so the, the turnaround times are not bad. A lot of people have been purchasing the certificates. And that means they're not bringing their computers in immediately. Uh, so that's led to, uh, you know, used to be before we did certificates, there would be you know, 100 computers in queue and it'd be seven days before you got your computer back. It wasn't good service, which is why we introduced certificates. Um, so basically, the Lincoln Service Center has a very small queue, which means you're not going to wait very long there, uh, probably uh, 24 to 48 hours on your turnaround there. Omaha Service Center is not in queue, uh, so that uh, they have open bench spots there. Uh, they, they have a lot more bench spots. They have 40 bench spots in Omaha compared to Lincoln's 25. So number of computers is about the same. It's just that they have more bench spots. Papillion does also have a small queue going on as well right now. Again, uh, 24 to 48 hours, nothing, nothing too terrible that you're going to get blown up by. Uh, but you can drop your computer off at any of the three service centers. We're open Saturday from 10 to 8, Sunday from noon to 5, and all the other days of the week as well from 10 to 8. Um, you can drop it off. We'll do the whole cleanup, check out, make sure everything is healthy and working well. We install that free program, Drive Advisor, for you uh, that monitors the health of your hard drive and sends you an email when your hard drive's health uh, is no longer working like you want it to work when it starts to fall. I got a good laugh out of a customer in the Lincoln Service Center. I'm like, you know, his hard drive was at like 47% and uh, health. And so I said, well, you know, when you have 100% drive, that drive has a heart attack when it moves to 99%. That's the equivalent in human terms of a heart attack. Your drive is at 47%. In human terms, that's the equivalent to Dick Cheney. I mean, you, you literally, are, you need a new heart. You need a new hard drive. It's bad. Um, and so, you know, he replaced his hard drive. And a lot of customers, I've been having to struggle to keep the solid state hard drives in stock because a lot of customers, if they're saying, if I'm going to replace my hard drive anyway, I may as well upgrade it to the solid state drive. It's five times faster. Had a woman, again, in Lincoln this week, bring her laptop in, and she says it takes like 60, you know, 75 seconds for this computer to boot from the time I push the button to when it's ready for me to log in. Um, we, she had a bad hard drive, which was contributing, admittedly, to some of that. Shouldn't have been quite that long. But when we replaced it with a solid state, we cut it down to 14 seconds. Um, it was 14 seconds from power button to ready to rock and roll. And she was just thrilled. She couldn't believe how much faster it was. This old computer that was three or four years old was like a brand new machine again um, that was going to last her family another couple of years just because she changed one piece inside of it. Um, which, of course, is why when we sell like, new laptops at Schrock, all of our new laptops come with the solid state drive because it's stupid not to. They, they make it so much faster, so much better. It, it means we can carry three laptops at Schrock, and all three of our laptops are faster than anything you can get at the box store, and you still can choose what, where you want to start from a price perspective. So it's pretty awesome. But uh, the preventative maintenance checkup is designed to take that computer that's been slowing down over time, that's been maybe getting a little infections going on in there or registry errors popping up, uh, a lot of bulky, sloppy, loose files flying around. Not, nothing like, not your files, but like update logs and just dumb things that don't need to be there. Windows update installation confirmation files, you know, just things you don't need anymore. Um, and, you know, we go through and to kind of digitally clean it out. More importantly, we actually open the computer up and we clean all the insides out too. You know, one of the things I didn't spend a whole lot of time on last week was your computer, for, air for your computer is like blood. If it can't get a good airflow going in there, it can't cool itself. And if it can't cool itself, especially for laptops, and even Apple laptops need to be cooled too, as you know from the MacBook Pro. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, uh, but basically, they all need air. They all need to be cooled because the processors generate heat. 
the computers don't want to die. It's like the start of the Terminator thing. They don't want to die. So what they do is they slow themselves down when they get too hot, so they make less heat. It's like on a hot summer day, you don't go running down the block. You kind of walk kind of slow because you don't want to generate your hot. And so your computer does the same thing. It slows down, generates less heat, and as a result, you get a junky performing computer that doesn't work very well, and the computer gets to survive another day. Where if we go in there and clean out all the dust bunnies and the nasties and the, the things that are clogging up the computer, because it's basically like the vent on your dryer. It pulls in air. Air has impurities in it. There's a little mesh filter in there. It catches all the impurities so they don't go into the fan. And as a result, you get a little lint blanket in there. Well, we clean that out. We get it all taken care of. And then the computer can breathe again. And you'll notice up to a, if you've never had a maintenance checkup before, it's like up to 25% improvement in performance. It is pretty phenomenal. Um, so we'll do all that for you. We inspect the capacitors, test the power supply, test the hard drive, test the memory, pretty much test everything to make sure everything is going good. Then we optimize everything. Uh, you know, if it's not a solid state, we'll defragment the drive. We'll go through and do all the work in there. You know, make sure you're free from viruses, malware. Make sure that all those files get removed and all those registry entries get repaired so that when you get your computer back, it's a nicely groomed, handsome piece of equipment again. Uh, and that's what we all want. And preventative maintenance should be done every six months. Um, some people stretch it to once a year. Uh, but if you push it more than once a year, you're firmly in the, uh, I'm gonna just going to buy a new laptop club. Because when these laptops overheat, they do permanent damage to the cooling system. And once the damage is done, it's like I said, it's permanent. We can't fix it by blowing the stuff out. We have to replace the cooling system. Then you're into like parts and labor and everything else. And you're making that whole uncomfortable decision as to whether or not you should buy new. So do yourself a favor and just maintain it. Especially when we're talking about doing eight hours plus of work to your computer and we're charging you like 45 bucks. I mean, you can't even get someone to work at McDonald's for that price. I mean, it, it's, pretty, it's a pretty good deal. So you check it out. You can uh, bring your computer in, of course, or you can go to our website at schrockinnovations.com. You click on Shop and Specials, and you can purchase a certificate there. The way the certificate works, it means you don't have to drop what you're doing and bring your computer in today. There's a lot of reasons you might not want to do that. You might have a life, <laughs> you know? Um, you might have to work. You might be traveling. Um, they, you know, the kids might be coming back for school for Thanksgiving, for example, and you're thinking ahead saying, if I buy the certificate now, when they come back for Thanksgiving, I can take my computer in and have their computers cleaned while we're eating turkey because the certificates are good for six months. So that's the thing. If you're, if you're looking forward and looking into the future, maybe you don't need, maybe you just had a maintenance checkup done. Well, make sure you grab the certificate so the next one that you get can be discounted as well so you're not stuck paying the $90 for it. Yeah, you can buy the certificates at schrockinnovations.com. They're on sale there, same price as the service center. And when you purchase them, basically it's logged in your Schrock account. We also get it logged, obviously, on our end. So when you come in, you don't have to print out the paper or come in. You can just come in and say, I bought a certificate. And you can look me up and we look you up. And sure enough, there's your certificate. And we go ahead and do your maintenance checkup. It works out pretty, pretty slick. 866-496-8772. Those are the numbers to join us on the program today. And I am not above bribery, folks. So uh, we are going to offer you a $25 Schrock Innovations gift certificate uh, to one lucky caller who calls in. We're going to draw at the end of the program. So we need to make sure we're getting names and phone numbers. And then, now, uh, because, you know, if we, if we ask for addresses, because we're going to mail you the certificate. But if we ask everybody for addresses, it gets kind of creepy. And, you know, who's this guy asking me for my address? And then he wants my phone number. And is he going to call me on the weekends? This is weird. Uh, but, no, we just ask for your phone number. And if you win, we'll call you and ask for your address. It, it makes it far more comfortable for everybody involved. 866-496-8772. All right, first caller of the program today is Dale. Welcome to the show, Dale. How can I help you today on Compute This? Hi, good morning. Good morning. I, uh, you know, you talk about seat cleaner quite a bit. And in the past, I have it was a downloadable portable version that you can put on a flash drive. Yes. And had good luck with it. And anyway, I went out to see if they had an updated version since what I was running before was XP. And I couldn't find it. After Googling it, they said to go to the, you know, the Pyroform website, but you have to look under uh, download build. Yep. And it's, it's tucked in there, but like everything else nowadays, nothing – has gotten easier. It seems like everything's more complicated. They have three different files. They have one called the C Cleaner Installer, which is a, a, a dot 
CXE file. Right. They have the zip portable, and then they have one called Seat Cleaner Slim. Okay. Uh, I downloaded the uh, portable zip file, unzipped it, and it looks like that's going to work fine. What are that? The other two, do you know what they are? The Seat Cleaner installer and the Seat Cleaner Slim, which is an installer with no toolbar. Right. Basically, it removes some functionality from Seat Cleaner to, to make it a little bit smaller. But here's the thing. One of the, the way, before they invented Seat Cleaner Portable, the, the, the technology wizards at Truck Innovations have been making our own Seat Cleaner Portables for years. Because when we run Seat Cleaner on your computer, we don't actually install it on your computer. Um, so when we do need to run it, we literally, what we, we did is we installed it to a flash drive, which is something you normally would be like not recommended. You don't take a program and install it. And when you're, when you're, you know, you open it up and says, where do you want to install? And you point it to like the E drive. You're not, you're not supposed to do that. Um, but then we install it there. And then what ends up happening is you know, you pull the flash drive out of the computer, take it to another computer and you plug it in there. And the C cleaner executable will run just fine off the flash drive by itself. So you can get the yeah. full featured version okay. of Sea Cleaner. That's Sea Cleaner Portable. Is all it is is the is the full featured Sea Cleaner without the associated things. Like for example, when you install it on your computer, it adds a context menu to the recycle bin. So when you right click on the recycle bin, you can actually run a CC Cleaner Deep Clean. Um, let me see what they exactly. I want to get it right here. When you right click, yeah, on that, it. that's why I don't want yeah. to actually install it. Like I said in the past, I've had good luck doing the you know yeah. putting it on a flash drive or. Or even, you know, dropping the file on the hard drive and just executing it from there without, you know, it's, you know, when it's the portable version, it doesn't install itself. Yeah, and the so. portable version, and all the versions, the core functionality is the same. You're getting the same core functionality. CCleaner is great for two things. Well, three things, I guess, technically, but for two things in particular. It's really good at repairing problems in your registry, uh, which means you don't have to download any of the other garbagey registry cleaners that you see on the Internet. You can run CCleaner when you want to run it, Clean up your registry. Most problems in the registry are not bad if you stay on top of them. It's when we get a computer that hasn't been you know, touched in six months, and then all of a sudden we're running a registry clean, and we have 800 problems to clean up. Um, and it cleans most of them up automatically, which is kind of nice. Um, the file cleanup utility is great. Uh, it goes through and cleans up all kinds of stuff from, the, from you know, all the browsing garbage and the recently run files and all that stuff. Cleans everything up there. The third thing it's good for is in the advanced menus, there is a, an option there that you can actually wipe a drive. Um, and you can do like a Department of Defense level secure wipe on a hard drive, which is kind of nice if you're getting rid of a flash drive or an external hard drive or something like that. You can run one of these wipes and literally to clean it off to the point where nobody can recover anything. So those are the three things that I would use CCleaner for. Uh, Piriform makes great products. Secure Updater actually monitors the Piriform products. So when there is an updated version of CCleaner uh, or any of their other ones, they make a, a file undelete tool called Recuva, which is kind of cool. Um, they make a, a program called Specky that tells you everything you ever wanted to know about your computer, all the specs. So they call it Specky. Whenever you have any of their programs that get an update, Secure Updater updates all of them. So uh, if you have Secure Updater, if you want to get CCleaner or one of their other programs, if you open up Secure Updater, you can actually just uh, go on the, uh, on the menu and say, check, check, check for those programs you want. And then next time it runs an update, it'll just download them for you, which is pretty cool. Thank you for the call, Dale. I appreciate it. I got to run here real quick. Got to take a break. But uh, thank you for the call. And we got you in the drawing for a $25 Schrock Innovations gift certificate. Bob and Steve, hang on the lines there. Your call's coming up next on Compute This. Schrock Innovations repair technicians also make house calls. Make an appointment and let us bring our award-winning computer support right to your home or business. In 1798, Eli Whitney's Connecticut Musket Factory was the first business in North America to use replaceable parts in a firearm. Before Eli's factory, if your musket broke, you had to send it away to an expert gunsmith for repairs or just toss it and buy a new musket. Technology manufacturing has come a long way since the 18th century, but you wouldn't know it by looking at today's big box store computers. Dell, HP, Sony, and other manufacturers continue to take away your freedom to upgrade and repair your computer by eliminating expansion and repair options. Some desktops are even powered by a tiny laptop adapter. 
Schrock Innovations believes in Eli Whitney's idea of interchangeable and replaceable components, and that's why our custom-built modular computers last longer and cost less to repair than computers you see at big box stores. Ask your friends and family how often they replace their box store computers, and they'll probably tell you every couple of years. And what do they do with the old machines? They just get thrown out like broken muskets. Imagine a place where your computer's problems can be fixed quickly and inexpensively. Imagine keeping your computer for six years or more. You are imagining the kind of computers we build every day at Schrock Innovations. Our modular systems last longer, perform faster, and cost less over the long term than anything you can buy at a big box store. While the talented technicians at Schrock Innovations can't make you a musket even if they tried, our commitment to the freedom offered by modular computers is the modern-day extension of Eli's innovative musket factory. We think Eli Whitney would be proud, and you can take pride in owning a small piece of American innovation. The modular computer from Schrock Innovations. Compute this pro tip, 423. Everyone knows you need an antivirus and firewall program for your computer, but which one is the best? Should you use the free ones, pay for a commercial product, or maybe even the free stuff your internet service provider gives you? The absolute worst thing you can do is to install nothing. Windows 10 comes with Windows Defender, but Microsoft never intended it to be your primary antivirus product. Free antivirus like AVG or Avast are more effective than Windows Defender, but Consumer Reports ranks the free antivirus products in the middle of the pack when compared to their commercial competitors. As for the free software from your internet provider, forget about it. It's designed to protect their network, not your computer. There are two products that trade the crown for best antivirus software year after year. Schrock recommends semantic products like Endpoint, but the Russian-made Kaspersky antivirus program also does an outstanding job. This pro tip brought to you by Schrock Innovations Computer Company. All righty, folks, welcome back into Compute This. My name is Thor Schrock. I'm the owner of the Schrock Innovations Computer Company. Coming up on the program today, the cyber warfare gap between the U.S. and China. Which side of the gap are we on? Which side of the gap do you want to be on? You might be surprised by the answer. We're going to have that coming up on the program today. Windows 10 updates expect slimmed down full quality versions, says Microsoft. So basically what Microsoft's planning to do with Windows Update is pretty crazy here. They're, they're going to actually make it easy to download updates. And they're going to make the updates smaller and more efficient so that you don't notice they're downloading while you're doing other things. Wow! When did they think of that? That's like a revolution in updating. <laughs> All right, so Microsoft says that uh, especially enterprise customers are going to see the biggest benefit here because they have the biggest number of updates. But Microsoft recently announced it was killing off its smaller Delta update option uh, introduced last year to help Windows 10 users and admins cope with monthly cumulative updates. So, you know, we're having trouble with the updates. So what should we do? <laughs> Let's just give them another update that, like, it's a Delta update. Delta means change. And so it's an, a, what's changed from the last update to this one. It's just that stuff. It's not all the unnecessary things. It's just the important stuff. So if you missed last month, it's no big deal. Uh, Microsoft provides three types of monthly updates consisting of full updates, like the latest cumulative update, smaller express updates that are about 100 megabytes to 200 megabytes in size, and larger Delta updates, which can be three to 500 megabytes. Delta and express updates have been available for supported versions of Windows 10 uh, all the way going back for a couple years now um, because Microsoft was giving time for companies and third-party update management systems to implement support for the express update protocol. Isn't that the one they're getting rid of now? Do, 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 do. Going back up two paragraphs is killing off, oh, they're killing off the Delta option. They're keeping the Express option. So what's going to happen here, guys, is when you see Redstone 5 come down to your computer in October, it is going to change the way your Windows Update algorithm works. And so in theory, what's supposed to happen here is it's only going to use a small portion of your computer's internet connection to download updates in the background while you're working. Then it's going to use a small portion of your computer's hard drive capacity to install those updates in the background while you're working. And then it's going to ask you to reboot the computer whereupon magically you'll get the little blue screen that says, you know, don't turn off your computer, we're installing updates. This is where it goes wrong every time. And it's gonna install the updates and in theory come up and you're gonna be ready to go with new updates in a seemingly pretty painless process, which for a lot of people, it can be pretty painless. For some people though, 20% of the people, it results in a great deal of pain. 
uh, which is why we created the product called Safe Upgrade. And we're not going to spend a lot of time on it today, but as we get closer to uh, uh, September here, uh, which isn't that far away, guys, uh, you're going to hear me talking more and more about it. We only put out 1,000 copies of Safe Upgrade uh, because we don't want to have it. This happened to us the last update. Microsoft pushed out an update, and then they pulled it back again. Well, of course, with Safe Upgrade, when we don't want your computer to automatically install Redstone 5. We, that's a huge update. Uh, you don't, especially if you're on a limited data plan, you don't want to download it 50 times. It, it's not fun. So Safe Upgrade downloads it one time from our really fast servers as opposed to the slow ones that everyone else is using. Um, and then we do all kinds of checks, just like your computer was on the bench in the service center. We check for viruses and malware. We check to make sure all your third-party software is up to date. We test the health of your hard drive. These are all things that any competent IT person is going to do before installing what is, in essence, a brand new version of Windows. Well, not in essence, it is a brand new version of Windows. Um, then once everything is healthy, and we've, if there's something not healthy, we alert you about that. We give you the option to continue if you're a brave soul, um, but we don't recommend it. And then once you know everything is healthy, you can continue with the update. The big benefit to Safe Upgrade is if something goes wrong, as it will for 20% of you. And it seems that some of you are luckier than others because some of you seem to get punched in the face every single update. Same people, every time. What are you doing? I don't understand. <laughs> so basically, if you're that person, you get safe upgrade. If something goes wrong during the update, now because we've sold you a product that has been promised to install this update, you have a warranty. And as a result, we're going to take it in under warranty as opposed to taking it in for an hour to two hours of labor, 110 to $220. Instead, this $50 purchase is kind of like an insurance policy. So that if something goes wrong, if you're in that 20% of people that get hit, you're good to go. Last time around, Microsoft made a mistake. They pushed out a release that wasn't ready. Then they pulled it back. We pushed out the release when Microsoft told us to push it out, when they pushed it out. And then we pulled it back when they pulled it back. But that didn't stop a lot of customers from installing it. And a lot of those customers had issues because of that update. Well, guess what? We took care of all of them under warranty. And it, it, was, it was an ordeal. I mean, we took care of everybody under warranty. No charges, fast support over the Schrock desk. We did everything we could to make sure everybody was smooth and happy. That's why we only sell 1,000 of these guys. Because if something like that happens and we sell 10,000 copies, I don't have the staff to back that up. If something goes wrong, we would be in a lot of trouble. So there's a 1,000 copies, which sounds like a ton, but when you think about how many people hear this broadcast every week and listen to it on Facebook and everything else, it's not that much, especially because this is a digital product, which means you don't have to be geographically close to use it. So this means people in Des Moines are downloading it, people across Iowa, Nebraska, Florida, Texas, uh, Montana. Last week we had Montana listeners, California listeners. We've had Oregon listeners. We've had listeners in Switzerland, for heaven's sake. So they can all download it and use it. You just go to our website and purchase it. And it's on the same page on the specials page as the maintenance checkup certificate. So uh, check that out because Microsoft's going to be making some changes to Windows Update as well as some other things in Redstone 5. Um, and those are some core things that when you monkey with that stuff, whenever you mess with the updating algorithm, it's kind of scary because if you make a mistake, you can't get updates to fix it. 866-496-8772. Bottom of the hour break. Bob, Steve, hang on the line. Your call's coming up immediately after the break on Compute This. Update all of your third-party apps on your computer with Secure Updater. It keeps all your apps running smoothly and helps block viruses. Download it for free today at secureupdater.com. Every person listening to this broadcast has either experienced data loss or knows someone who has. When you think about it, you have a lot more data stored in many more places than you'd like to admit. Have you downloaded those videos from your phone, backed up the pictures on your iPad, or even tackled that sometimes daunting task of backing up your entire computer's hard drive? Most people just don't back up their stuff. And that's why Schrock Innovations has one of the most advanced data recovery centers in the Midwest. Equipped with the latest DDI data imaging devices, state-of-the-art custom recovery software, and Omaha's best data recovery technicians, Schrock Innovations has a 96.8% success rate when recovering data from damaged hard drives, flash drives, camera cards, and more. We all know we should back up our data, but if you are ever caught in a data loss nightmare, call the experts at Schrock Innovations to get your data back right where it belongs, safe and backed up on a stable hard drive. Compute this pro tip number 753. Have you ever wondered how the bad guys always seem to find a way into your computer? 
Gone are the good old days of email worms and I love you viruses. Nobody wants to steal your data anymore, or in many cases, even your identity. Today's cyber criminals want to sell access to your computer or hold your data for ransom. The bad guys are exploiting zero-day vulnerabilities to break into systems that are supposed to be hack-proof. These vulnerabilities are always newly discovered, and the criminals have a brief time to exploit them before they get patched. Antivirus and firewalls do not prevent these attacks, but you can minimize your computer's exposure by installing all security patches as quickly as possible. The average computer needs 12 patches a week. That's not including the ones that are automatically delivered to your computer. Boost your cybersecurity by staying on top of it manually or use a patch installation program like Secure Updater to get your computer the patches it needs. This pro tip is brought to you by Schrock Innovations Computer Company. Fox News Radio, I'm Karen McHugh. President Trump says a New York Times report about his attorney, Don McGahn, cooperating with the Mueller team is much ado about nothing. His personal attorney backs him up. The reality is that the president encouraged all the people who testified to tell the truth, to take as long as they needed to to do that. The Mueller team is uh, panicking. They know they don't have a case. There was no collusion. There was no obstruction. They can't prove it, and they are trying to uh, get the president to testify. Rudy Giuliani on justice with Judge Janine. A shark attack closes down a Massachusetts beach. The town of Truro on Cape Cod indefinitely closing a beach where a New York man was bitten by a shark. Long Nook Beach now closed until further notice. That beach was closed after 61-year-old William Lighton of Scarsdale was hospitalized Wednesday with puncture wounds to his torso and legs. Fox's Paul Stevens. Fox News, we report, you decide. Now, the News Radio 1110 KFAB Weather Watch. Showers and storms will work their way in later this Sunday morning. Expect on and off periods of rain showers and even pockets of heavy downpours to make their way across the metro for this afternoon and this evening. Showers and storms will continue into Monday. Expect highs in the mid 70s. With Omaha's most accurate weather team, I'm 6 News meteorologist Peter Sherwood on News Radio 1110 KFAB. 70 in Omaha Council Bluffs, 71 in Lincoln. All righty, folks, welcome back into Compute This. My name's Thor Schrock. I'm the owner of the Schrock Innovations Computer Company, and we're just getting started. Halftime is over. Ready for the third quarter. 402. Oh, no, I'm going to give you a, oh, I can't give you a local number because if you're listening from out of town, like the local numbers, for those of you longtime listeners, they still work. They're still there. But... The number I'm supposed to read on the air is 866-496-8772. Bob, I promise you'd be first up here when we got back from the break. I'm going to keep my word. How can I help you today on Compute This, Bob? Well, I've been a long-time customer. Uh, I've got a desktop that purchased from you about four or five years ago. Okay. I've got all, I've got all of your products like Endpoint, Secure Up, Data, Drive Advisor. Awesome. I've purchased my certificates for the, um, the maintenance checkup and also the uh, update for this fall. Awesome. And then last night I was on Firefox, and something happened I was not expecting. I got this screen that took over my computer. I was trying to get into my Twitter account. Apparently I mistyped something, and it took me to a website that locked up my computer. Um, I couldn't get anywhere with anything on it. I couldn't turn it off. I couldn't. I mean, I could turn the computer off, but I couldn't uh, yeah. kill any of the applications that were up there. Taskmaster wouldn't let me do anything. My hard drive is running 100%. So um, the best thing I figured out how to do, it was a virus, and you're supposed to call this 877 <laughs> number, and then they're right. going to fix your computer for you. That's ha. so nice of them. I don't know how it got past Endpoint, but it was a pop-up, and it popped up big time. Okay, so first of all, there's a, a couple things here. Um, there is a, there's two different stages. This is a, uh, uh, a fake alert infection, basically. <laughs> right. The fake alert is, hey, you're infected, because when that mm -hmm. popped up on the screen, you were not infected. I, I know that. So, so what I did was I disconnected my Wi-Fi so that they didn't have access to my computer. And um, so I looked around. I couldn't find anything that I could delete. So I turned it off, mm -hmm. turned it back on. Uh, I did a restart on it. And when it came up, I was able to get into Firefox with no uh, was warnings fine. or anything. They didn't take it over. Right. So once I was happy again, I turned the Wi-Fi back on and the computer's working. But I thought I'd let you know that even though endpoints there, and I've got an ad blocker and all this stuff. I still got hit. Well, that's the thing. You didn't get hit. There was no virus. There never was. Oh, oh I see. Okay. Um, yeah, it was all fake. It, it's, it's fake news. No. 
Hey, it's, CNN got me. Big, oh, oh, wow. Yeah, I got I, I got called out last week. A guy sent an email saying I need to be more careful about you know staying out of politics and just sell my products and, and be on my way like a like a good. Well, your peddler. customer did it. You did. Yeah, there you go. But uh, but basically, the, uh, the what happens is the the computer the the website you visited it was a uh, it was a fake website. So they they commonly will go after misspellings. Like if you spell Google with three O's or something, you yeah. know, you you end up on these sites and then what happens is they redirect you immediately. So that you hit that site and then it redirects you to another site because Endpoint is constantly finding, like your computer reported that site when you got hit. And it, it, so that the people who came after you who mistyped Twitter didn't get that site anymore. But they have yeah, okay. to keep changing the site it's forwarding to to stay one step ahead of the cops, basically. And so it sends you to a website that throws open a pop-up and it's called a Chromeless window. A Chromeless ah. window means there is no menu bar at the top. The menu bar also holds the X that you'd click on normally to close the window. Uh, yep. so there's no tabs. There's nothing. It takes up the whole screen, and it can be really frightening because you can't get out of it. You bring up the task manager, and you can see everything there, but it doesn't do anything. And you're like, why can't I, why can't I get rid of this big window? Well, here's mm -hmm. the thing. I'm going to teach you, Bob, just between mm -hmm. you and me, the super secret ninja task of how to close a window with your keyboard because uh -huh. this is how you get rid of that if it ever happens again. Okay. Alt F4. F4? Alt. Hold down the Alt key, which is just to the left of the space bar, and then F4. And that hey, will... Well, right. Don't do it right now, people. Come on. Don't do it right now. You're closing your Facebook windows. Oh, my gosh. All right. No. All right. I'll give everybody a second to get everything opened up again. <laughs> no, but basically, Alt F4 force closes your browser window. So when you have uh, a window okay. that well, pops I'll, up... I'll never have a chance to use it, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> well, when it pops up like that, there, there are, these things happen all the time. They're totally fake. We get about two calls a day in each of the service centers. And here's yeah. the thing. If you get the pop-up window, you're not infected. If you click yeah. on the, the pop-up window and download their software so they can repair your computer, mm -hmm. then you're infected. <laughs> Yeah. You're installing the virus, and Endpoint will freak out on you and try to stop you, and it'll say right on there, to continue, you need to disable your antivirus. Oh, man, oh. I got to do what's broken anyway because I'm infected, stupid Endpoint. I'll just disable you, and then all of a sudden, it's, it's sad story time. Uh, well, but th Thanks for the help, and my wife and I voted for you on uh, uh, Omaha. They, yeah, whatever. The best of Omaha. Thank you, Bob. Best I appreciate it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot. I appreciate your time. Appreciate appreciate you being a Shrock customer. You know, it, uh, it's kind of weird. You've been doing this for 20 years. And, you know, the story is that's been the same for 20 years. There's a security threat. There's this. There's that. There's a problem. There's something you want to do with your computer, and it's hard to do it. Um, and and this, the details change, but the core problems always stay the same. And when, we, when I started Shrock 20 years ago, we wanted to create a company that would help people with their technology. Who, who doesn't make them feel stupid. I mean, because we've all had that tech guy that's like, just, just, just let me do it. Just let me do it. And then they move so fast you can't see what they're doing. Boom, 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 boom. There you go. And you're like, that's great. Thank you. But what did you do? No, nah, don't, don't worry about it. You know, it, that isn't cool. So, you know, when you call someone at truck, we don't try to impress you with our, with our intense vocabulary or our, uh, our knowledge of tech, highly technical items. We talk about heart attacks and politicians and things, <laughs> things that we all understand uh, so that we can describe your computer in such a way that we all get it. And we all, I have a customer that came in the other day, and, you know, she's, she was upset because her modem wasn't working. Uh, nothing was coming up on, on the screen. And, you know, we all know we're sitting at the tent. We're all at the front counter and we all know she means her computer and not her modem. There's no need to correct that person. They, they don't. We're communicating. Isn't that what we're here to do? And then, of course, her son comes in behind her. Mom, it's not a modem. It's a computer. She's like, whatever. I'm not a computer person. <laughs> it's okay. We knew what you meant. We, we wrote it down right over here on the work order. We translate. 866-496-8772. Steve, you're next up on the program. How can I help you today on Compute This? Hey, Thor, thanks for taking the call. Uh, it's a real easy question. I've got a, a fairly high-end Dell laptop that's about a year old yeah. that I bought the uh, premium service agreement on. Yes, sir. And my question is, if, if I bring it in for uh, maintenance check with you guys, am I going to avoid that service agreement with them? Because you guys could probably clean out registries and do all the file updates. No, um, no. So you, that's the question. Yeah, you'll be, you'll be absolutely fine. There's nothing that we can do to that Dell laptop 
that would void your warranty. Um, Gateway uh, tried to do this. When Gateway Computers was around back in uh, 2000, 2002, somewhere in that neighborhood, um, they'd put stickers on the back of the computer that basically said, if you, op if, so if you open the side panel of your computer, you void your warranty. Um, and it went all the way up to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court ruled that you cannot, you it, the person owns the computer. You can't void their warranty for them. It's like if you open the hood of your car, you void your warranty? That's, that's stupid. So you can't do that. So there's nothing that we can do that's going to void that warranty for you. Uh, in fact, one of the nice things at Schrock that we do for customers is if you have a warranty on your HP or your Dell or something like that, we've all had to do that thing where you have to ship it back and they send you an empty box and then you put it in the box or they're going to send it the high end service ones. They'll send a technician out to your home. So then you have to be home. Uh, and then the guy comes in the house. We had a Dell tech work on our bench the other day because customers can bring their Dell stuff into us and we will have the technician come to the shop and work on it. Uh, so you don't have to be home all day. This guy was working on this laptop, no joke for seven hours. Could you imagine if you like, you thought you were going to come home from your lunch break and like have this guy work on your computer for an hour and replace something. And it was to replace a keyboard. Yes, he had to take the whole thing exactly. apart to do it. But seven hours? So that's really good. Yeah. So if you bring it into us, and if we find something wrong with it, we'll get it covered under the Dell warranty and then have them come to the shop to fix it. That's really good news because, you know, I had, I actually had them when I first got it. It was one of those kind of DOA type things. They oh came and replaced the entire motherboard. Yep. And that's the service room I've got is they'll come to me. But now that I know I can bring it to you guys and, and they'll come to you and fix it there while I'm doing other stuff, that's great. Yeah, absolutely. We're happy to do it for you, Steve. Thank you for the call today. We also got you in the drawing for the $25 Schrock Innovations gift certificate as well. All right, 866-496-8772. Those are the numbers to join us on the program today. Uh, if you have a question, you can give us a call. If you have a comment, you can give us a call. Also, we're live on Facebook, facebook.com slash Schrock Innovations. All right, so <laughs> Kathy says, St. Augustine in the house. <laughs> My Facebook listeners are awesome. All right, so basically, guys, uh, there's, a t there's a gap between the United States and China. We all know this. Um, there's a technology gap there, and it seems like every single day there is some story about you know some super military Chinese hacker unit. They actually have like you know X22 unit X22 is hacking the United States. They're taking over all the security cameras and doing this and doing that. And you know why are we always getting attacked? I mean we talked about this I think last week. Why does it always seem? Why can't we defend ourselves? Why are we always getting attacked? Headline. China aims to narrow cyber warfare gap with the U.S. You heard me right. I did not read that incorrectly. China wants to narrow the cyber warfare gap that exists between China and the United States. China is looking to narrow the gap in the U.S. in terms of cyber warfare capabilities, according to an assessment of Chinese military capabilities published by the Department of Defense. The Pentagon report says in recent years, the Chinese army has emphasized the importance of cyberspace for national security because of the country's increasing reliance on its digital economy. It said the Chinese military strategist sees cyber operations as a low-cost deterrent that can demonstrate capabilities and challenge an adversary. However, the U.S. report said that China also believes that cyber capabilities and personnel lag behind those of the U.S. and that China is working to improve training and bolster domestic innovation to overcome these perceived deficiencies and advance cyberspace operations. That's, you could reverse the names. I swear this story ran in the U.S. yesterday. That we, we had a call like two weeks ago, I think, on the program from somebody asking, like, what are we doing to train the next generation of kids that are coming up? Because our kids are so far behind all the kids in the other countries that we're getting hacked to death. So, no pun intended. Uh, cyber hacking, of course. I don't want to trigger anybody. Cyber hacking. We're getting cyber hacked to death. Um, but according to the DOD report, we're kicking tail and they're trying to catch up. Now, think about that for a second. All the stuff that's been released over the past, I don't know, how many years, WikiLeaks, Snowden, all that stuff – all the capabilities that we didn't know that our government had, that they had the whole time, they literally had the capability to monitor all traffic going through Cisco switches and routers in real time. Everyone in the world uses Cisco products. Now all of a sudden you understand why they need that data center in Utah so badly, right? There's a lot. It's not, just, it's not because they're spying on Americans exclusively. There's a lot going on over there. And then all of a sudden you're starting with this article, it, you can reframe that picture all of a sudden. And it's not so sinister. You know, it, it's still it's still kind of scary, but it's not as sinister because you realize here 
that the the capabilities that our intelligence operatives have and our analysts have to monitor and collect data and, and analyze and sort it and sift it is better than what China has on a, on a state level scale. So yeah, from time to time in the press, we get a little bit of a bloody nose and all you seem to ever hear about is, you know, Putin's new super weapon or, you know, the Chinese hackers coming at us every month. But you don't really hear about anything the U.S. does unless there's a Snowden or a WikiLeaks or something like that. Then all of a sudden, it's salacious because you're like, oh, my gosh, I didn't have any idea that my country was doing this. This is awful. How could we be tracking people like this? Now, granted, there are some constitutional issues we're tracking United States citizens. Understood. Granted, it's very difficult to separate when you're tracking digital things the owners of the digital things aren't always as real clear. So you might be tracking a United States citizen's digital thing and not realize it. Um, and of course, they're not listening to phone calls and things in real time because there's no human way you can listen to the entire population of the planet's conversations at one time. You need computers to do that for you, which means you need a data center, which is why we have a great big data center in Utah. I'm guessing. I'm guessing. Who's that at the door? Uh -huh. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Uh, 866-496-8772, next caller. You know, hmm. Uh, how did Art Bell die again? Uh -huh. All right, uh, too soon? <laughs> no, Art Bell was awesome. I, I grew up listening to that guy on the radio. 866-496-8772. For those of you who don't know who Art Bell is, he's a, uh, he did the, the late night show. If you ever had to drive late at night and you were trying to stay awake, he would have the weirdest people on the radio. They'd talk about UFOs and abductions and secret u.s government experiments and all kinds time travelers he had a special hotline at one time set up for time travelers to call in. if you're a time traveler call this hotline if you're a time traveling insomniac i knew i was going to call that hotline but uh 866-496-8772 that's our hotline but this is great news i mean china is behind the u.s our, our all that money we spend on defense this is what always blew my mind we spend so much money and i know bureaucracy eats up a lot of it but how is it possible that we don't have better super weapons? You hear about the supersonic missiles that Putin has. How do we not have that? Funny thing, we do. We built them in the 1960s. 866-496-8772. All right, we've got to take our final break of the program, guys. When we come back, Firefox blasts a whole bunch of add-ons, 23 of them. Uh, over 200,000 users' browsing activities were snooped on. And the 16-year-old hacky hack hacker who hacky hack hacked Apple, and uh, yeah, two, two countries came together to find this 16-year-old kid and put him on ice. They won't release his name because they're afraid somebody might hurt him. We're going to tell you all about that one coming up next on Compute This. Now you can configure and purchase laptops, desktops, tablets, and more, all at the new Innovations.com. Check out our specials for one-of-a-kind discounts and deals. Welcome to Shrock Innovations. How can I help you today? I'm having a problem with my computer. You're at the right place. We fix problems with computers. That's why I'm here. What seems to be the problem with your computer? When I press the power button, it doesn't boot up. How fast can you fix it? We're the fastest computer fixer in Omaha. We'll fix it fast. How fast? Real fast. Do you have it plugged in when you turn it on? Of course it was plugged in. Do people make that mistake a lot? You'd be surprised. When you press the power button, what happens? It roars, then stops, and sits. Ooh, like a lion? Like a what? Well, I suppose. Hmm, sounds like a bad power supply, sir. Is that bad? It's not good, but we can fix it fast. How fast? How's that for fast? Does it work? Yes, sir. More purring, less roaring now. Wow, that was fast. Shrock Innovations is the fastest computer repair in Omaha, sir. That's great, but all this talking is making me hungry. You guys sell sandwiches? We do fast computer repair. If you want a fast sandwich, you have to go someplace else. Why would we sell sandwiches? I don't know. All this fast talking is strangely familiar. Shrock Innovations. If you want a fast sandwich, don't go there. But if you want your computer fixed and back on your desk fast, give them a call or visit their website at shrockinnovations.com. Compute this pro tip number 187. Recently, you may have received a phone call from someone claiming to be from Microsoft or had a message pop up on your screen telling you that your computer was infected. Do not respond to these calls or messages. They're always a scam. Microsoft will never call you about your computer. Here's how the scam actually shakes out. You get the phone call that your computer's infected. The scammers hit you with some mumbo jumbo about an infected IP address. They'll ask your permission to connect and help you fix it. Once they're in your computer, they do a bunch of fake scans that detect a lot of problems that really aren't there. You see the scan results and figure your computer's in trouble. Next, the scammers will demand up to $400 to clean up the computer and set you up with a lifetime protection. Don't fall for the scam. Keep good security software installed like Endpoint and Secure Updater so when things like this do happen, you know you are covered. This pro tip brought to you by Schrock Innovations Computer Company.
All righty, folks. Welcome back in to Compute This final segment. It's the fourth quarter. Time to finish the game. All right. We do have open phone lines, 866-496-8772. You can join us on the program today. Mozilla. Mozilla makes the browser Firefox. They also make some cool other cool programs like um, uh, Thunderbird. They make Thunderbird, which is basically an Outlook clone. So if you don't want to spend money on Outlook and you want a client on your computer that downloads your email and manages everything, things you can set up rules and do a lot of the advanced features, um, one of the things that always that just makes our customers, gives them such a heartache, is every time Microsoft comes out with a new version of Windows, they get a different mail program. And you have to move from one to the other. And, you know, like it or not, people get hooked on the way things look and feel. And when you change it on them every few years, they get frustrated. Thunderbird is like timeless. It's never changed. So Thunderbird is there. Mozilla makes it. It's pretty cool. They also make Firefox, which is a, a great browser. Um, it's nice. Basically, when it comes to browsers, you have three choices. You've got Microsoft Edge, which is not Internet Explorer. I'm wagging my finger. Don't use Internet Explorer. It's bad. Bad, 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 bad. If you use Internet Explorer and your name is Bob, that fake alert is an automatic virus infection because you're using Internet Explorer. But because he wasn't using Internet Explorer, they didn't get in. So that's how bad Internet Explorer is now. It's a dead browser. Hasn't been updated since 2015. It's dead, gone, buried, put it in the hole. Nice tombstone. Say a prayer, it's gone. So you have three choices. Edge, which also has a blue E because, you know, let's make it look like Internet Explorer. Maybe people won't notice. Um, then you've got Google Chrome, which is a free browser made by Google that does track everything you do for, for advertising purposes, of course, to deliver better ads. Um, and then you've got Mozilla Firefox. Mozilla Firefox is an open source browser. It's free. Everybody knows what's in the code because it's open source. Uh, there's nothing in Firefox that tracks you. Um, everything in Firefox is actually designed not to track you. Um, there's all kinds of features you can install. In fact, there are add-ons you can install to even take that security to a higher level. One of these add-ons was made by a company called Web Security. And it was recently pulled from the uh, Firefox store, basically, for uh, its <laughs> quote-unquote data slurping habits. I love that, data slurping. Um, they got rid of 23 of them, but this particular one uh, was installed over 220,000 times for customers. So 220,000 Firefox users were concerned about their security, and it was originally actually included in a recommended add-ons post on the Firefox blog last week. So even Firefox was recommending you install this a week ago. However, the recommendation has quietly been removed after German security researcher Mike Kukitz revealed that the software sends user data to a server to an unencrypted HTTP channel in Germany. Okay, what does that mean in English? Everything on your computer is moving toward encryption now. Every, there's a brand new version of uh, the secure socket layer that's been finalized this week. I mean, that I have that story. It's here. If I, if I, if you know, no calls, I have too much time. I could tell you all about the great new security innovations that the new HTTPS protocol is going to bring you. Nobody really cares. They just want their stuff to be safe. So everything you do on the internet is, is secured. Even this web stream that's going out over Facebook right now is being transmitted from my laptop to Facebook over a secure line. This is a public broadcast that I'm freely putting on the internet. Why do we need to secure it? It's best practices to secure everything. So when we redesign Secure Updater, for example, when it communicates with the Secure Updater servers, it communicates through an encrypted channel. Drive Advisor, when it sends you an email, it communicates over an encrypted channel. Not because there's anything super stealthy going on, but it's just best practices. It is best to have your, your, your stuff encrypted, which is why this particular add-on was sending a history of every website you browse. First of all, this is a security add-on. Why would it need a copy of every website I've ever visited sent to their server? That's kind of a security breach. Furthermore, they sent it to their server using an unencrypted channel, which means any man in the middle, any person in the middle, can intercept this list being transmitted to the German server and know every website I've ever been to, which, you know, for most people isn't that big of a deal. Again, best practices. And this is a security app. So as a result, now this is something that hasn't always been the case. The original version of Secure Updater also used unencrypted channels. 
because all it's doing is going and talking to the browser and saying, or to the server and saying, is there a new version of Java? Yes or no? And if there is, I'm going to download it. Why do we need to secure that? It's something that's publicly available on the internet. Maybe someone could learn from this that you don't have the most recent version of Java installed. That's about the extent of it, but that'll be fixed in about 30 seconds. So what's the point? Well, even when we redesigned Secure Updater, we even went to the best practices of using a secured encrypted channel because it's the right way to do things. So, uh, so yeah, not a huge breach here, guys, if you were using web security on your Firefox browser, uh, that plugin, not a huge breach, but definitely something that it's good to see that Firefox is taking it seriously because if you stack these breaches together, they end up causing something you know, bigger. 866-496-8772. All right, and I promised you guys I would get to this. Also, a uh, quick program note, stay tuned at the end of the broadcast. On Facebook, we do another little mini program called an Aftershock. Uh, when I have time after the show, I stick around for 20 minutes or so, take calls, things that didn't fit in the program, or stories that were just a little too techy that were still funny, you know, that kind of stuff. I'll tell some funny stories from the service center from the week. You know, we, an hour goes by pretty quick, so that extra 20 minutes is kind of fun. You can watch it live at Facebook, facebook.com slash Schrock Innovations. You don't have to have a Facebook account to watch. So if you prefer not to do social media, you can still go there and watch the show. Um, that's facebook.com slash Schrock Innovations. All right, hacky hack hack. I love that. I can't say that enough. It's like, it's like the word dongle. Yeah, so Christine. <laughs> okay, this is... During the aftershock, don't let me forget to tell you the story about Christine and her dongle, okay? Um, so, yeah, Christine is the front desk person at Lincoln, and she loves to talk to customers about dongles. So, she, it's a hilarious story. Um, so, anyway, hacky hack hack. Teen arrested for breaking into Apple's network. Updated. The Apple fan allegedly managed to download roughly 90 gigabytes of corporate documents as well as access customer accounts. Oops, Apple was trying to keep this one pretty quiet, actually. This happened uh, like a week or so ago, and this is the first anyone's really heard of it. An Australian teenager may have found it amusing enough when he managed to break into Apple's mainframe. Who has a mainframe? It's the mainframe. Like, now it's a server farm. Uh, and he, he named his folder of stolen Apple files that he put on his computer, Hacky Hack Hack. But law enforcement doesn't find it funny. The teenager from Melbourne unnamed for legal reasons and safety, is now facing criminal charges after he allegedly accessed Apple's network without permission, leading to the theft of documents and the apparent compromise of customer accounts. So uh, the teenager basically, they, they don't say how he got in, but a 16-year-old kid hacked Apple and stole your customer account. So uh, it's a good thing there's a cybersecurity gap. I wonder what the gap between China and Australia is. Hmm. All right, need to draw a winner of the $25 Schrock Innovations gift certificate. Today's winner is Steve. Congratulations, Steve. You got yourself $25. We will get a hold of you here on Monday to get that certificate out to you. Also, don't forget to vote for us in the Best of Omaha. Uh, you can vote for that Best of Omaha. Vote for Schrock Innovations Best Computer Repair. We appreciate your support, and we'll see you again next Sunday for another edition of Compute This. From the Millard Roofing Studios, we've got you covered. This is new.